Hello everyone, it's Christy here and I am here with my first card video to share with you through Two Scrapbook Friends. This is really exciting. Today we are going to be making a Miss You card and I'm going to walk you through the sketch here but I have to be a little secretive because there's a couple of other ideas on the other page that I am not ready to share yet. So here's what we're going to be making today. We're going to create an A2 landscape card. So that means it's going to be five and a half inches wide and four and a half inches tall. And we're going to be creating a Miss You card because right now we are still in lockdown. We can't see the people that we love and we miss them a lot. So to celebrate that, we're going to use some new products from Hero Arts. For the sentiment, we're going to use the literally the best sentiment stamp set. And we're also going to use the book stack background stamp. Uh, some of the techniques we're going to be using today are emboss resist on our panel and then we're going to make a sentiment tag and add some nouveau drops for embellishment. So let's get started. I'm going to put the sketch off to the side to uh, guide me here and we'll get some of these pieces out of the way. One of the things that I wanted to share with you through this video is the blend of distress inks that we are using. We are going to use tea dye, vintage photo, and chipped sapphire. And I think it's really cool if you haven't had a chance yet to take a look at Christina Werner's YouTube channel. She is Star of May on YouTube and she has created a series of videos where people can um, look at the blends that she's created. It's called uh, Christina's Oxide Combos. And I've based my swatches off of a lot of the combos that she came up with. I do find this really handy to keep within reach when I'm crafting and it's really um, a great way to be able to see what your inks are going to look like blended together. So I thought this blend in particular was great for looking like an old bookcase or um, something in an old library with those browns and then to darken it up with um, with the blues at the end. So that is the look that we're going for. I do have a list of supplies here and I'll put that back up at the end so you can take a screenshot uh, if you would like to. So we are going to get started here, as I mentioned, with the emboss resist. So let's get rolling. When I am stamping with a background stamp, particularly the red rubber ones, I like to use the Misty in kind of the opposite way that we would normally do. So you'll see me use it the uh, normal way when, um, when we do the sentiment. But in the meantime, we're going to do it this way. I do find you get... Um, better impressions with the background stamps. So first thing we're gonna do is treat our paper. This is a panel of Nina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound cardstock. And I'm just treating that really generously with my anti-static powder tool so that we don't get embossing ink anywhere we don't want to. For the embossing ink today, I'm gonna be using the Wow Embossing Pad. I love this embossing pad. It is awesome. It is a really great, clear, super sticky ink, and it stays wet for a long time. So you get a little bit more play time with this ink, I find, um, than some of the other embossing inks. And you know, there's there's some great ones out there, but this one I, I have found pretty foolproof results. So we've got that inked up nice and juicy the ink off to the side make sure the stamp is in the corner of the misty and we're gonna go for it so you can see I have a little piece of purple tape just holding that paper in place giving a little bit of pressure here to the stamp I want to make sure we're getting all the lines of those books all the little embellishments of the books and let's see how we did. So I know it's really hard for you to see, but I can see that we got a really good impression on the first go, which is what we were going for. So that's great. I'm going to put the Misty off to the side and we will come back and use that later. So now we're going to do the actual embossing. I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper. This is just regular 
computer printer paper. I also like to have the, <laughs> the tape on the back. It serves as a little bit of a hinge, especially when you're embossing um, those full panels. So for the embossing powder, we've got the white super fine detail embossing powder from Ranger. I really like the embossing powders from Ranger. They are really great quality, come in all kinds of different colors. And for this technique in particular, this white is nice and a, a brilliant white. And if you, if you haven't tried Emboss Resist, I really encourage you to give it a try, especially if you are wanting to work on your ink blending because by having the embossing powder on your background it just gives you a little bit more of a seamless blend I'm just tapping off the excess there so now what we can do is set this off uh, up here because we're done with the embossing we're gonna put the powder back into our container save that for our next project and we're all set here so through the magic of television um, i already heat set a, a panel uh, so we've got that ready to go i didn't want to have to compete with the volume of the the heat tool but basically what you would do at this point is get your heat tool nice and hot and um, you just move it around until your embossing powder gets nice and melted like this panel. So we are going to uh, melt that after we're done filming here. And in the meantime, we're going to get started with our ink blending. So let's get our oxides set up here. Again, we have tea dye, vintage photo, and chipped sapphire. So I'm going to be using the blending brushes from Tailored Expressions. And I'm gonna keep my swatch here handy so that we can see, again, the blend that we are going for. And of course, the emboss resist of the bookcases is going to show up through that blend, but I do find it handy to have the, um, to have the swatch out there so that you can see what the final look is that you're going for. So if you haven't tried Distress Oxides for blending, what are you waiting for? You gotta give this a try. These oxides blend so creamy and you're gonna see right away when I start to blend. I'm just gonna, just gonna do a quick check here because I think I might be upside down and I was, good thing I checked. So this background stamp has a direction to it and I wanna make sure the lightest color is at the top. So good thing I did that. <laughs> double check there to make sure I'm on the right track. So we are going to get started. So let's start blending in that gorgeous tea dye color. And when you're blending, don't be afraid to get inky. Sometimes, especially if you're blending colors that uh, might not normally go together, um, you might need more ink on your paper than you initially thought. Um, I really like the Nina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound for blending. Um, the My other favorite paper to blend on is the Bristol Smooth cardstock. It's, it gives you a really lovely blend as well. So I'm just bringing this tea dye down a little bit and you can see that the emboss resist is already shining through, but there's, it does have a bit of a, the tea dye tinge to it. We're gonna buff that off later. So don't worry about that. Now I'm going to get into the vintage photo. Vintage photo is one of those colors that you should have in your stash. And I know that recently Carolyn mentioned on a video that vintage photo is one of her favorite colors to do distressing. So edging up um, sentiments or, you know, uh, pages on your scrapbooking. Um, it's something that uh, it's, it's a really common color to do that with. So if you haven't tried your vintage photo um, in the in the oxide form, oh man, it's just lovely. And like, look at how well these are blending. I, I'm barely trying to to blend them here and the the seamless blend is is just lovely so i'm just going to go a little bit more with the vintage photo here buff that uh, side a little bit 
bring that up. And now we, oh, one thing I, I should have mentioned, I did not change brushes because these two inks, tea dye and vintage photo, both in the brown family. So no need to change the brushes, completely okay to continue going on. Now, since I'm changing to the blue, I'm just gonna give my media mat a quick wipe and I'm going to grab a post-it note so that my fingertips do not mark up my project. So now we're going to go in with the chipped sapphire. And again, the look we're going for here is really to have the look of an old bookcase. And you know, blue might not be a familiar color in, <laughs> in the library, but the, the blend of the brown to blue is, is really cool. And it really does give us that old effect of a, an old bookcase in an old house or, or an old library. So when you are transitioning from colors that, you know, may not be as close together as the anti, or sorry, as the tea dye and the vintage photo, you, you might have to work at your blend a little bit more. You can see we've got to work this a little bit more to get a blend between the chipped sapphire and the vintage photo. But these oxides are just so creamy in their texture and they blend beautifully. So we are going to stop at this point and I'm going to give the media mat another wipe here, get some of that blue off. We're gonna close up our oxides. We'll use um, the chipped sapphire a little bit later for our sentiment, but in the meantime, we are going to buff off the oxide inks and let that white embossing powder, that super fine detail embossing powder from Ranger, shine through. So you can see how much ink I'm getting off of that embossing powder. It's just sitting there on the top and not absorbing into the paper. And now we're really lightening it up. One thing you could do if you wanted this embossing powder to pop even more is emboss it twice. So the embossing powder would be raised up a little bit higher, um, which can create some cool effects. So um, that's an option for you if you wanted to, to do that. So our panel is all set. We're gonna set that um, up to the side there. And we are going to get working on our sentiment. So time to take out the background stamp. Since we are using the, um, the clear stamps, <laughs> sorry, for the sentiment, we're gonna put the foam insert and the pad back in the Misty. Put another piece of the Nina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound up in the corner and we're gonna hold that in place with our magnet. The sentiment that I'm gonna go for within this literally the best stamp set from Hero Arts is to make a long story short, I miss you. And again, like we said at the beginning, it's quite a time we're all going through and I think this, uh, this card could be appropriate for many people. So I'm going to stamp this down and as I showed you in the sketch, I want to have a little bit more room to the left of the sentiment to be able to create a little fishtail. So let's close the door of the Misty. Make sure that's straight. Lift up here. And now we're going to stamp in the chipped sapphire. If you have not tried stamping with your oxide inks, I really encourage you to give it a try. The oxide inks are fantastic. You get a great impression and the colors are so vibrant. Uh, you're, you're really going to, to see a difference, I think, um, in, in the quality. Now, let's, let's hope everything I just said <laughs> comes true when I lift up the misty door here and we see how we did with our sentiment. And that looks great. Um, I've only used this stamp a couple of times, so I am gonna go ahead and do a second 
stamping, and that's the beauty of the Misty, is we know our paper's already lined up. We just ink that stamp up again and press. A little bit of pressure. And there we go. That's the nice dark chip sapphire that uh, that I was hoping we would see. So that is fantastic. One thing to caution when you are stamping with the oxide inks. The oxides take a little bit longer to dry than a normal dye ink. So I am going to hit this. Sorry for the noise of the heat tool. Just quickly to give it a quick dry to heat set this so that when we take it to the paper trimmer, it's not going to smudge at all. So this doesn't take very long, just a quick couple passes, swirl it around and you are good to go. So now we have reached the cutting part of our video. So I'm gonna bring in the big machinery. <laughs> We've got the Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer here. And you'll notice I have a piece of washi tape at four and a quarter on my cutter. It's a very common um, cut that I use, so I like to make sure things are, are super straight. So as I mentioned, our final card size is going to be five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter tall. I'd like to have a nice white margin um, on the from the card base to the panel. So we are gonna cut this down a little bit. And you saw when I was blending, I, I warped a little bit of the edge of that paper. So I'm not fussed about it because all I'm gonna do is cut that off. So there's our first cut. So now we're down to four inches. We still need to take a quarter of an inch off because I'd like to have a quarter of an inch border around the whole panel. What I like about when you've ink blended is you, it's up to you of which piece you want to cut down. So you can make that choice on your own. And I really want the blue to come through because that's what we've stamped our sentiment in. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the tea dye off the top. Now, the, from the side to side, this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna take a quarter of an inch off each side and make that even. Just one more pass here. There we go. And we're gonna cut this down to five inches. Excellent, so get that scrap paper out of the way. So we've got our panel all set to go. Now we're going to trim up the sentiment. And you may have seen this on other card maker videos. If you line up the sentiment to the guard on your trimmer and do the exact same on the other side, you're going to get a really nice even cut. And this sentiment is really easy to do that with because it works out as you can see at the top grid there to an inch and a half. So we've got this nice and trimmed out. I'm gonna take a little bit off this end just so that margin is the same on the three sides. Now, I don't want the sentiment to span the entire card. I do wanna have a little bit of room so I can put a fishtail in it. So I'm gonna trim this down and we'll do a couple cuts just to see how this looks. So let's go first to four and a half. I think that's still a bit long. We'll go down to three and a half. And that looks great. This so will stick with three and a half, put the heavy machinery away, and we are all set to pop the fishtail in here. Lots of different ways you can do um, a fishtail in your cards. I like to keep things pretty simple. You can use a die if you'd like, which I do use sometimes if I am using specialty paper. But in this case, it's an inch and a half, so I'm gonna go halfway in and then a little bit up. I'm gonna put a mark with my scissors and then just simply cut towards the middle, which keeps it really easy to get that nice fishtail or um, banner look if you were putting this vertical. It just adds a little bit of interest to, to your card. Now, one thing we're gonna do to again, um, not have this sentiment be so stark onto the card base is I'm just going to put a little bit of the chipped sapphire 
along the edges. This is a really nice, easy way to make the sentiment piece not stand out as much. Um, another way to do this, a really popular way, is to use the ink blending tools from Ranger, the foams. Uh, that's a really quick and easy way to do this as well. Okay, so we're all set there. I'm going to pop a little bit of adhesive using my tape runner onto the sentiment. And I got it a little bit off there, but that's okay. We can just fold those pieces in. I'm going to bring in my T-Ruler. T-Ruler is a fantastic investment if you don't have one and you struggle with getting things straight. Highly recommend this tool. You can see we can get that sentiment just perfect there to be able to press that down and it's perfectly straight on our card. Now we are ready to add a little bit of dimension. Uh, we're gonna pop up the entire panel using some foam tape. And I'm going to pop this up on, I already have a card base from Nina Solar White 110 pound, um, sorry, the Solar White in the Classic Crest, 110 pound weight. And this is a really lovely, sturdy base for your cards. They're gonna hold up awesome if you are using the 110 pound. So we're gonna take our roll of foam tape and as you can see, this is getting down uh, a little tiny and when it gets to this size, I immediately go on to the website and order myself another one because I the last thing I wanna do is run out of foam tape. I think, you know, through the, through the pandemic as we've all been turning to, to crafting as you know one of our therapies and making sure it's a time that's fun and where we don't have to think about the state of things as my adhesive gets low I've joked that you know the adhesive anxiety is is a real thing we want to make sure we've always got got enough to be able to make our projects so I'm going to pop off the release paper and one thing you've you've probably seen in other videos it's really common to do this is to take your liquid glue. I'm going to use the the liquid glue from Lawn Fawn. Um, and this holder is by Make It By Marco. You can you can get these from two scrapbook friends in, in different colors. I liked the rainbow one. Um, it's a really great tool to keep your glue tube standing up nice and tall. Um, it helps to not get any clogs in your glue. So I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of this adhesive. And you might think, well, geez, you've already got uh, adhesive there. Why do you need the liquid glue as well? And what the liquid glue does is just provides a little bit of a hydroplane so you have some play time to get your panel straight on your card. And I'm going to show you my secret weapon for getting panels straight on your card bases. This is a ruler uh, by Creative Grids that I have had for a long time in my sewing supplies. And what I love about it is I can line up on this card base and I can see I'm a quarter of an inch in from the side and I know exactly where to place my panel to be a quarter of an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from the bottom super easy and I can just push that down with confidence and know that I have a straight project so really great tool if you if you are a sewer and you have a ruler like this bring it out and use it for your paper crafting as well <clears throat> so we are nearing the end here our last step is to add a little bit of embellishments on our card and to do that we're going to use Nouveau Drops in Midnight Blue and Antique Rose. So give your Nouveau Drops a really good shake. I also like to test my drops out on a little bit of post-it note paper or scrap paper or whatever you've got handy, just to make sure the consistency you're looking for is going to be um, good. So you don't have to mess that up on your project. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to start with the antique rose. Just some random dots there. And then we're gonna go in with the antique blue. 
or sorry, um, not antique blue, antique rose, midnight blue. And just having some fun with the placement here. Just random, nothing specific. Now you can see that these Nouveau drops are quite high and domey. Um, I don't really know if that's that's not a word. Um, but uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to get rid of this post-it note paper because I don't know about you, but having that there is a magnet for my fingers. And it's they're going to go in there. So we're just going to get rid of that and avoid a catastrophe. Um, so you can see that these are, they're really high in terms of the circle shape. Um, and I don't want that. I'd like them to be a little bit flatter. So here is a tip for you. You can flick the back of your page just using your fingers. And it will reduce the dominance of your Nouveau drops. So you can do that as much as you like. I do recommend waiting a couple seconds, especially if your drops were extra liquidy. Um, you want them to set for just a second before you do that. You can also tap your card project on the edge of a table and that will um, flatten the mode as well. And maybe we'll do that in an upcoming video so you so you can see that. So that is the finished card project for today. I'm going to put the list of supplies here so you can see everything that we use to make this card come together. So again, we had the Hero Arts, literally the best stamp set for our sentiment, the book stack for our background, distress oxides, embossing powder, a little bit of everything in this project, but I think it came together really nice and I will be able to send this to um, a fellow bookworm that, uh, that I'm missing a lot during the pandemic. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned something in this video or got some ideas and inspiration for your next crafting project. And I look forward to seeing what you make using you know, emboss resist or your ink blending um, or uh, interesting things that you have done with Nouveau Drops. So uh, put your thoughts in the comments and thank you again for joining. We will see you next time.